remember watching a news story one time and I think it was on CNN or Fox or one of those and it was during a hurricane season uh, in the United States and it was filming live from this supermarket where uh, these people were huddled into this freezer of the supermarket because outside these tornadoes were just devastating this small town. And in the midst of this um, tornado, you can, it's completely black. It's like a, almost like a cave and you couldn't see the faces, but you hear them and you can hear their voices and in unison. And I don't know any of their stories. I don't know any of their backgrounds, but in unison, they begin to cry out to God. They begin to say, God help us, God help us. One person would say, Jesus help us, Jesus help us. And it was like this unifying factor that struck every person in the room. They were helpless, they couldn't do anything to defend themselves, and they needed someone much greater than themselves to come to their rescue. Hi, uh, my name is Marian Jordan Ellis, and I want to welcome you back to Five Minutes in the Word with Redeeming Girl Ministries. We're talking about today this attribute of God that we call upon when we are backed against the wall, when we're in a place of desperation, when we cannot do one single thing to help ourselves or to save ourselves, we call on the God Most High. Well, if you've been in our study, you know that we're looking at a scripture every week where we meditate on a name or attribute of God. And this verse this week, looks up to the heavens in the midst of our storms, in the midst of our crises, in the midst of our greatest struggles. And it says there is no one higher, there is no one greater, there is no greater authority than the God Most High. Let's look at this verse together. It is found in Psalm 57 verse 2 and it says, I cry out to God Most High, to God who fulfills His purpose for me. Now, as, as usual, we want to start, first of all, with the context. And it's important for us to remember when we're reading a psalm that most of the psalms are either worship songs or prayers. And so it's always important to know who wrote this. And this psalm was written by King David. And King David had this incredible relationship with God. But this psalm particularly was written before he was king. And I want you to understand the context of this. David, as a young boy, he was the youngest of all of these sons. God handpicked him and selected him out of all of his father's household to be the next king of Israel. God sent the prophet Samuel to anoint David in front of his brothers and his father. And David was anointed and told that he was going to be king over Israel. Well, then David, this young boy, faces the giant Goliath. He defeats and by the strength and power of God, the giant Goliath. And then he's sent to live, ironically, in the home of the current king Saul, who hates and despises him. And then for almost 20 years, David is on the run from Saul. This man who knows that God has anointed David to be the next king, he has this murderous, jealous rage, and he is trying to kill him. Saul doesn't care that David has been, that God called David king. He is going to take matters in his own hands and he is going to kill David. And so for many years, David and his men hide in these caves. And so Psalm 57 is written from one of those caves when David is surrounded, when his life is in jeopardy, when he cannot do one thing to stop this madman who's approaching to try to kill him. What does David do? He calls up to the God Most High. It's, he's basically saying, your throne God is higher than Saul's throne. Your authority God reaches far more than this man's authority does. Your ability God is far bigger than Saul's ability to hit me. And so David's faith in this moment looks beyond what his eyes can see, which probably is the blackness of a cave, let's be honest. Or if he's peering out the, the cave to the approaching army of Saul, he doesn't look at that. He lifts his spiritual eyes up to the throne of God and said, you're the most high. What can man do to me? And then here's what he also says. He says, I cry out to the God most high. That's his desperate prayer. And then he's, he reminds his soul to the God who will fulfill his purpose for me. I love how he does that. Not only does he cry out to God in desperation, but he reminds his heart of truth. The perfect will of God cannot be thwarted. God is sovereign. And if God has said, David, you're going to be king, guess what? No human on the planet 
can stop David from being king if the Lord God Almighty has said it. And that's true of us as well. We will face human beings. We will face scenarios. We will face our own dark caves. And in those moments, we're going to be tempted to look at the blackness of the cave or the approaching enemy and focus on that. And what we have to do in that moment is cry out to the God Most High, who is bigger than any government, who's bigger than any opponent, who's bigger than any authority, and know that He reigns supreme. And second of all, what God's will for you is, God is going to accomplish it. There is no one that's going to thwart the will of God over our lives. And so when I read this verse and I think about the God Most High, there are so many scenarios in my life I need to believe this. This last weekend, I faced a scenario where I began to look at the blackness of the cave. I began to fear the enemy. And I, in that same kind of desperation we see David, I began to cry out to God. These are kind of guttural prayers where they come from here. This is not a prayer list that we go, dear God, help me. This is a cry out. And when we do that, we've got to remind our hearts of truth and begin to say, you are the God most high. You can do anything. Nothing is impossible with you. And as David said, you will accomplish all things that concern me. Your purpose for my life, dear Lord, will not be thwarted. I pray this uh, study today encourages you because it's encouraging me to remember that you're not alone in that cave. There is no darkness that the light of the world cannot penetrate and he is for you and not against you.